Hey guys, just want to do a quick video here for you. Um, kind of show you a couple different knife sharpeners here that have been around quite a while. You guys know that I sell the block sharpener. And I'll give you some reasons to why I like it. <clears throat> um, I like this. Don't get me wrong. Okay. I like this. This is a vintage item. It's great for kitchen knives, tools, what have you. I mean, kitchen knives, uh, pocket knives, you know, anything like that. But the angle is what it is, okay? There's, <clears throat> it, it's going to, if the angle is not what this is, it might change the angle <laughs> because this doesn't flex. Where you guys know my other videos, I'm trying to get out of this glare. These pins, they flex and they take on that original edge, all right? This sharpener has been around a very long time. It will get your knives sharp. It will remove metal, a lot of it, <laughs> okay? Um, and for a cheap kitchen knife, you might be all right with that, you know? Though I find it does take a little bit longer. Um, it does get the knives sharp to a point. This is, you know, just like a regular pull-through sharpener right here is where you start it up. Now, <clears throat> this is kind of sold as, instead of this item where you come in and the angle is the angle is the angle, this technology if you will is supposed to be better in that you set each angle one set or one side at a time however if the angle is off you know this is only going to set what it's going to set i mean i kind of understand what they're trying to say about just doing one side at a time however you're going to pull off an immense amount of metal <clears throat> and also i mean with some nice if i can probably better show you because I'm trying to hold the phone here um, another thing to keep in mind as well is there's a lot of play in there so <laughs> unless you keep I mean with any of these these type sharpeners I don't care which you know end you use unless you're keeping it exactly straight exactly the same you're going to mess with your angle a little bit it might not be enough for you to really notice the result but the end result is going to be the edge isn't going to last as long because it's not forming a fine enough point of the two you know meeting together to form your edge that makes sense so <clears throat> being a knife sharpener salesperson um, especially when people have similar technology I like to look at it and see what it's all about so I saw this little guy all right this is basically um, a lot of you may see the Rachel Ray sharpeners out there <clears throat> diamond fingers is what they're called and I use this diamond, um, you know, the diamond technology or whatever. And I, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this looks pretty neat. It has, you know, flexibility. So it can hug the edge like our block sharpeners do. Eh. First off, it's got too many moving parts, okay? It's not going to last a lifetime, opening it, closing it, taking it with you. But if you look at this spot right there. This is brand new, okay? This um, diamond is just basically like taped on emery board type stuff. It's garbage. I am sorry. Will it work? Yeah, maybe. What I, I've tested out, and I can't really do it right now because I'm holding the, the, the phone for a video. But when I've tested it, basically, like, I ran it through a couple of times and cut a few pieces of paper. By the third or fourth cut, I lost the edge. So I think really all I'm doing is just throwing, like, a big wire burr up there or something. And I don't think it's going to be visible in here. But also, one of the fingers, is what they call them, back here, has already lost its adhesive or um, abrasiveness. The adhesive on the abrasive. And actually, i get back in a bit camera here right there it's gone as well too so like i say brand new item just out of the package um yeah this is probably one that's been sitting in a warehouse on a shelf for quite a while because yeah i did get off ebay or whatever for 
you know, pretty darn cheap. But you can see the quality is junk and it is just not going to last. Um, <clears throat> this is the, the paperwork. I mean, it, and it was brand new, never been used or opened. But let's see if it says where it was made. I don't see that. Supposedly it's an Australian company or whatever, but I don't know. Um, see there, eight diamond fingers. You know, a neat concept, horrible execution, horrible design. You know, it, it just goes back to, for what it is, you can't beat the block sharpener. You know, it, it, and I've, I've said this so much. No, if you enjoy sharpening, if you enjoy using your stones, I don't expect anybody to go out and sell off all their stones, all their sharpening systems, and everything else. Heck, I'll show you my part of my stone collection. Matter of fact, here's a Japanese natural right now. This is, you know, more for razors and everything. Um, <clears throat> it's not the be-all, end-all, by any means. But it is a darn good tool. One of the, the best of its kind. And its kind being a portable knife sharpener, a knife toucher upper in the field, keep with you, well-made, quality product. It does what it's supposed to do. Nothing's been changed on this since the 60s. Or I mean, since it was first made in the 60s until very, very recently. And it was just this back here that was changed. A little more, some rubber grips were added um, on the newer styles. This is one of the old styles. <clears throat> I'll get a new one and show you what the difference is. All right, so yeah, this is one of the newer uh, styles. This is what the ones that I sell. Um, <clears throat> rubber grip up here and back here. It helps with, you know, like putting on it with slipping. A little bit beefier design. I kind of do miss the hole back here because we would, you know, take and bolt them down. Um, and a lot, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of... Uh, like meat packing places or you know butchers and stuff they'll actually bolt theirs down can't do that with a new design as easily i mean you could but it's, it was just easier with this you know and then it's there you don't have to worry about it it's always, always there so that's what a lot of the meat places would do bolt it down and then just come up and touch it up go back to cutting their meat and that's kind of what it's good for. Anything that you would use a butcher steel for, a strop for, a touch-up stone, anything like that, this is going to be good for that. You know, I'm not trying to sell you the, you know, greatest gizmo gadget. I, I'm being truthful. I'm telling you, it is what it is. It's the, and it's the best of the kind of it is of what it is. It's a good, like, touch-up hone, sharpener, um tool period i personally don't like to use it to remove chips and things like that however just i will it takes a little bit longer <clears throat> and i may you know with time find a better way to do it uh paul block the inventor and maker may have a better way that he does it but you know if the edge is really wonky and needs some you know chip removal or something like this, this is all i have with me it does work and what I do is I just use the flat part of the of the sharpener, much like you would one of the um, oh starts with letter letter C. Anyway, I would do like that, and then I go back to you know putting it in the V there and making it flex. I don't want to show you right here, 100% American made. Okay. Established in 1969, we do have also our trademark 